Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Autoblog. The Thero crossover segment has become very appealing to a wide range of consumers. People who are looking at buying a vehicle that actually has functional third row seats or some consumers who just want a vehicle that is a bit more spacious than a compact SUV but also will give you better interior comfort and refinement over some of the more affordable options on the market. Sadly, the Mazda CX-9 is one of those vehicles that is going to get overlooked compared to some of the competitors like the Volkswagen Atlas, Kia Telluride, and also the Hyundai Palisade, despite the fact that this vehicle is experiencing its best year in sales in almost 10 years. And I think there's a few reasons as to why Mazda is becoming very successful in this market, even though it's not the most spacious when it comes to the interior. One being is the fact that Mazda has really been focusing on a more luxury direction, where they're going to give you interior quality and refinement at a price point that's not going to break the bank. But also they're going to give you exterior styling that to me is an eye opener at a price range around forty to fifty thousand dollars. The interiors for Mazda vehicles in 2021 is a major selling point for the brand. They're going to give you a layout that is very driver centric and driver focused but also user friendly as well despite the fact that you're not going to have as much technology as you see with some brands in this market. But also you will have an experience that in my opinion is superior to some of the rivals. And that's why I am here to take a look at the Mazda CX-9. Not only because it's unappreciated in its segment, but also if you're looking for a luxury crossover without breaking the bank and you can buy a new one which will give you a good amount of practicality, then maybe going with the Mazda CX-9 signature might be a great decision. Now before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Prime Mazda in Nord, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Mazda inventory. Also, if you are local to the Boston area, make sure to check out their new location on the Auto Mile, which now makes it one of the biggest Mazda dealers in the state. Also, before we get started, make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time a new review goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. For every consumer that genuinely needs a third row, there's five buyers who are only looking for improved practicality and possibly the better technology and comfort features. Manufacturers have been more than happy to oblige as midsize crossovers are becoming just as popular as compact SUVs. But it's also a win-win for both the brand and car owner as these vehicles are arguably no-brainers if you have a budget exceeding 35 grand as the value they provide is arguably the best you'll come across at or below $50,000. The Mazda CX-9 in the eyes of journalists is the runt of the three-year-old crossover market, simply due to interior space not being on par with rivals. And yet despite the criticism Mazda receives, it's honestly one of the most surprising options available in this segment. Starting off with pricing, the CX-9 in this review is a signature which comes in with a starting price of just under $47,000 and sits atop of the trim levels for this crossover. For those not interested in going with a well-equipped model, the CX-9 Touring might be a great fit at thirty-six dollars Dimensions, both exterior and interior, are going to be the main talking points among buyers and experts alike, as the CX-9 does outsize rivals like the Kia Telluride very slightly. But Mazda's design language with aerodynamic body lines really gives the perception that this crossover is trimmed down, especially if you're familiar with the Volkswagen Atlas or Hyundai Palisade. Putting the CX-9 size into perspective within the Mazda lineup, it's 20 inches longer and 5 inches wider than its sibling, the CX-5, making this 3 row SUV appealing to buyers who may not feel that a compact crossover is adequate enough for their daily needs. When it comes to off-road capability, the CX-9 is going to offer a surprising 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance, giving you the ability to take on unplowed roads during the winter or to take on the paths less traveled. Getting into the road presence, the CX-9 takes on an appearance that's similar to its siblings, like the CX-5 and CX-30, as Mazda's signature front fascia design gets some minor cosmetic upgrades to differentiate it in the lineup. Since we had the signature trim for this review, 
the titanium metallic front grille with accent lighting is certainly going to stand out, but also adds a subtle hint of luxury. In true Mazda fashion, a chrome strip will outline the lower portion of the grille and integrate in the LED headlights for continuity. And with the smoother body lines, the CX-9 looks modern. However, there's a sense of minimalism which works really well for the crossovers from this Japanese manufacturer. Tucked away are small fog lights to help provide better illumination on dimly lit roads. And overall, you have a cleanly designed crossover that may not draw a lot of attention, but has a classy demeanor for a vehicle priced around 50 grand. Moving over to the side profile, the Signature will be sitting on 20 inch wheels, with 18s being only available for the Sport and Touring. While tire size can affect ride quality, the CX-9 handled the bumps and imperfections quite well, and with the softer suspension, you're not going to be thrown around or cringing every time you take on poorly surfaced roads. You'll have body color power folding side mirrors with LED turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, this is where you'll notice some styling cues that differs from the CX-5, starting with the chrome strip that runs the length of the rear fascia and blends into the LED taillights. While the CX-9 isn't designed to be a sporty crossover, the roofline and seat pillars aren't the typical boxy and squared off body lines we see from some competitors, and you'll also have decently sized dual exhaust outlets. But letting you know that this crossover is meant to get into some light off-roading situations is the plastic cladding for the rear bumper, making the CX-9 a comfortable daily driver or an adventure vehicle for you and your family. Under the hood, the CX-9 is powered by a 2.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that puts out 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque with premium unleaded fuel and is paired with a six-speed automatic. While performance output might not rival those with the V6, you will feel the torque with this crossover, especially in the low to mid-range, giving you enough power to safely get on the highway and on daily commutes is more than sufficient when traveling on back roads. By opting for the signature, all-wheel drive will come standard, providing year-round drivability if you live in colder regions of the US but you can go with front-wheel drive for lower trims. For fuel economy, you're going to receive right around 20 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're good by a plush and upscale cabin, despite the dashboard not being as visually appealing as you'll find in a Hyundai Palisade or Kia Telluride due to the lack of a full digital gauge cluster. However, the power adjustable heated and ventilated Napa leather seats are the highlight of the interior, which helps elevate the driving experience. Mazda is no stranger to putting a lot of emphasis on interior quality. And up front for the driver and passenger, they'll be blown away by the fit and finish, but also the comfort. In front of you, between the analog gauges, you will have a small digital display offering relevant information, such as fuel efficiency. And while there is a sense of simplicity, it's blended in seamlessly, unlike other Japanese competitors. To help keep your eyes on the road, you will have a head-up display, projecting a digital speedometer, but it's also here where the blind spot detection and lane departure warning systems will be displayed. Then moving over to the infotainment system, you'll have a 10.2-inch screen, but unlike most head units, this isn't a touchscreen. And instead, you'll have a road dial, touchpad, and quick access buttons to get you to different menus. It's also on the center console where you'll find the volume knob for the radio. Scrolling through this user interface, you're going to notice that it's not the most complex or in-depth, but resolution and quality is certainly on par with competitors. Of course, you will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation. And coming standard for the Grand Touring and Signature is a 12-speaker Bose Center.2 surround sound system to amplify the audio of your favorite music. Adding to the safety aspect for the CX-9, you have a top view, side view, and front and rear cameras to provide improved vision for when you're parking on city streets or in tight spots. Making your way towards the center console, you'll find the buttons for your heated steering wheel, three-level heated and ventilated seats, 
dual zone climate control, and front and rear defrosters. And below that will be a cubby and wireless phone charging pad for your smartphone. An overlooked minor detail inside the CX-9 is the wood grain trim, offering an upscale and classy vibe. It's also here where your drive mode selector is, which will affect throttle response and steering input when you switch to sport mode. For the center storage compartment, you'll find enough room for a smartphone and smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof to let in some additional light into the interior. Now moving on to the second row, we're going to start off on the passenger side. And the seat is adjusted further back, it's also on a recline. And I still have a good amount of legroom to work with here. Now obviously, I'm not the tallest person out there, I'm around 5'5", five five, but I think average size adults could sit back here pretty comfortably. But also more importantly is that you can slide these seats forwards and backwards to give you more room. Also, of course, it will give you better access to the third row. But also, there's a few more things that I want to take note of. One being is that these captain's chairs do sit pretty high up, so you don't feel as though you're sitting on the floor. It gives you a very comfortable feeling as well. And also the fact that since this is only uh, two seats in the second row, uh, your center console gives you a nice luxury crossover feel and really makes this vehicle seem a lot more premium than the price would suggest. Also, these seats do recline, so you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. Then for the driver's side, I adjusted the seat to someone of my height, around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. Obviously, not as much room as we see with other vehicles in this segment, specifically because of the center console, but also just when it comes to the width of this vehicle, it doesn't seem as spacious, but in my mind, is more than adequate if you do have a smaller family. But getting to that center console, though, this is what we normally see with vehicles that are around $100,000 rather than a crossover that's priced below $50,000. So you will have your three-level heated outboard seats with two cup holders as outlined by Piano Gloss Black. And you will have a storage compartment back here with two USB inputs. You can easily fit some iPhones or some smaller items back here for sure. But it doesn't stop there though because in front of you, you will have climate control to go along with two rear air vents but also you will have sunshades for the second row. So if you have kids back here or you just wanna have a little extra privacy, you can just lift those up and now you can just really enjoy the experience sitting back here. And I'm all for this when it comes to the direction that Mazda is going in because this feels really luxurious. This is so much more refined and also more passenger friendly than what we see from some competitors. Now for third row passengers, Obviously, for average size adults, it's going to be a very tight squeeze. However, it isn't necessarily as bad as I've been hearing because you expect, oh, it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's not going to be as enjoyable to sit in the third row. But I would say this, when it comes to the leather materials, when it comes to the padding, it's certainly more softer than the Kia Sorento I reviewed earlier this year. Also, you're not really sitting on the floor, so I can really appreciate that as someone who is certainly not going to be able to fit back here on a longer drive. So it's pretty comfortable right now. Obviously, no one's sitting in front of me. However, it's more spacious than I was expecting because when it comes to shoulder room, I think two smaller kids could sit back here pretty comfortably, in my opinion, especially if they're around four and a half feet tall. They're going to be very comfortable back here. They're going to enjoy the driving experience. But when it comes to average size adults, that's really where I feel that it's going to be quite the squeeze. Also back here, you will have a cup holder for each seat and also a USB input on either side. So if they have their smartphones or their iPads with them, they can stay occupied on a longer drive. Now coming around to the back, one of the main talking points for the Mazda CX-9 is its practicality. Because as we all know, despite the fact that this vehicle is longer than some of the competitors, it's not as spacious as a Honda Pilot or Kia Telluride. And you see that when it comes to the cargo space. So behind the third row seats, you're looking at right around 14.4 cubic feet of room, which falls behind its closest rivals. Now we do have some netting here with some of the items that come with this CX-9. And I think that if this wasn't here, I'd be able to fit two bags of my camera gear, my gimbal box, and two tripods easily. It is practical enough if you have to have the third row seats up. However, this vehicle isn't the most conducive if you do have a bigger family. 
Now, on either side of the rear cargo area behind the third row seats, you will have some netting for some smaller items. There's some great compartments here where you could fit some water bottles or maybe even a first aid kit. But then once you fold the third row seats, you're then looking at right around 38.2 cubic feet of rear cargo space. And now you have a lot more room to work with than say a Mazda CX-5. The CX-5 has right around 31 cubic feet. Now, as we all know with Mazda, they're not the most spacious or practical in their segments. However, when it comes to interior quality, that's really where they shine. And that's why I think when you're looking at a Mazda CX-9, this isn't one of those vehicles where you're gonna cross shop with say a Kia Telluride. The Kia Telluride to me is one of the best vehicles in the three row crossover market. But this is really a vehicle where you could say, wait a minute, I could pay a little extra and get a bit bigger vehicle than if I went with a CX-5. And that's why the CX-9 to me slots into place really well in the lineup. And even though it's not the most spacious, it is practical enough where if you do want to load up some gear, maybe you're going on a camping trip, maybe you're going to the mountains to ski and snowboard, you will have enough room behind the second row seats. And then with the second row seats folded, you're looking at just over 70 cubic feet of room to work with, which once again is not going to be class leading at all. However, if you are looking at buying a bigger vehicle at around thirty-four dollars to $40,000, the CX-9 is a great option over, say, some compact crossovers that are getting pretty expensive now, especially on the higher end. So if you don't care for the features, you don't really need the softest and most plush interiors, then the CX-9 is going to be a great option, especially if you are looking at buying a CX-5. So you're going to have more practicality, you're going to have more space to work with if you are someone who's constantly on the go and you do have a smaller family where you're going to soccer practice or you're just looking for new adventures and new roads to travel, then the CX-9 is going to be a great fit for you. However, despite the lack of interior room, if you want to say that, for a vehicle of this size, and also the fact that it's not as practical as some of its closest rivals, there is one aspect about the CX-9 that makes it a great vehicle. And that is the driving dynamics, but also the ride quality as well. When you're looking at a vehicle in this price range at around forty dollars to $50,000, you're not really expecting to have the most refinement behind the wheel. You're not really expecting to have a luxury experience. Even though you could probably go with an X3 at around $50,000, you're not going to have the practicality that you're going to find in the CX-9. Now, of course, as we talked about earlier on, when it comes to interior space and practicality, it's not going to live up to other vehicles in this segment, like the Honda Pilot and the Kia Telluride. But what I will say, though, is that when it comes to the driving dynamics, when it comes to the refinement and interior quality, this is really where this vehicle, in my opinion, might be one of the best in its market. And getting to that interior quality, you have nice soft touch padding found throughout, especially for the center console, so you can rest your leg on the center console if you are a taller driver. But also the Napa leather seats are truly comfortable. They're not aggressively bolstered, but they will keep you in place for sure. They give you a nice uh, hugging sensation. They definitely will give you that secure feeling that you're looking for, especially with this being a daily driver where you're going to be cruising around with your family on a daily basis. One thing that you are going to like about Mazda products, including the CX-9, is that it's very well insulated. You don't hear a lot of road noise at all. When you're not accelerating and you're not hearing the four-cylinder, it's actually a very quiet experience. One of the quieter interior cabins that you're going to find in its price range. Of course, though, when it comes to the engine note, though, it is pretty loud. But then when you let off the accelerator, just quiets down and now you can really enjoy some cruising on some back roads. What you're also going to like too is that when it comes to the safety aspect, it really is one of the more safer options on the market. So even with the head-up display, what you're going to notice is that there is blind spot detection letting you know there is someone in your blind spot. But then if you use your turn signal, the car will beep at you letting you know that you really shouldn't be getting into that lane. Also, when it comes to lane centering, very aggressive. In fact, you're going to feel vibrations on the steering wheel and you will get that pushback to stay in your lane. So if you're not paying attention, you're doing the wrong thing like focusing on your phone or you're just not looking at the road ahead of you, the car will let you know that you're driving unsafe and that you should be paying attention. But also it's really good to know that the car has your back where if you have a vehicle that is in your blind spot, you really can't see in your side mirrors, the car will notify you. So I like that. 
but at least it's not as annoying and as aggressive as what we see with Subaru products. More importantly though, if you are a bit apprehensive about going with a bigger crossover, because the CX-9 is one of the longer vehicles in its segment. It does outsize uh, even the Kia Telluride in terms of length, but it drives a lot smaller than the size and dimensions would suggest. So it certainly feels more like a compact crossover in terms of width. So even though you have plenty of shoulder room, even though you have a lot of space to work with up front, it drives a lot smaller. So it's certainly maneuverable. Also when it comes to steering input, it is decently weighted. It's not heavy, but also it's not light either. It will give you some feedback in the corners. So getting into that cornering, you will feel the body roll. This is not a very agile crossover at all. Even at around 20 to 30 miles an hour, you just don't have that confidence to really throw it into the corners. So even right here around 30, I can feel the body roll. But the steering is very direct. It gives you a lot of confidence for sure. And that's one thing I do like because a lot of vehicles in this segment, especially the Japanese rivals, they're not really the most fine-tuned at all, especially when it comes to the braking and the accelerator. So as I'm braking here, nice feedback. I'm not really mashing on the brake pedal and I'm stopping without really giving a lot of input on the brake pedal. So I've put the CX-9 in sport mode. I wanna see how it performs off the line here. Now, as I always say, with the turbocharged four-cylinder engines from Mazda, it pairs up really well with the six-speed automatic. You do get smooth gear shifts, and it certainly adds to a level of refinement behind the wheel of this vehicle, but other Mazda products as well. I'm not a huge fan of the six-speed automatic with a naturally aspirated four-cylinder. To me, it just isn't that good of a pairing. But in sport mode, what you are gonna notice is that the steering input does tighten up very slightly, but also the engine note does become a bit more aggressive. The gear shifts are more aggressive, but also quicker as well. What I would say though, is that if you are driving a crossover like the CX-9, you're just gonna wanna put it back in comfort mode. It doesn't really change up the driving dynamics that much. And also it does quiet the cabin down because I noticed that in sport mode, the engine note does become a bit more egregious. And to me, I prefer having that softer and quieter feel behind the wheel, especially in a vehicle that leans more towards the luxury side of things. So after this extensive test drive, would I recommend taking a look at the CX-9 and experiencing one for yourself? And what I will say here is that compared to some of its rivals, like the Volkswagen Atlas, Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, it certainly lives up to those vehicles in terms of interior quality and refinement. It's a vehicle that definitely leans more towards the engine level luxury side of things compared to say a Toyota Highlander or also a Honda Pilot. But it always comes down to the interior space, how much room you're gonna have to work with. And I do think that if you have smaller kids, you can certainly fit them in the third row. Also when it comes to the second row seating, uh, you are gonna sacrifice the middle seat for the captain's chairs. But I just think that when it comes to the overall quality for the interior, when it comes to the soft touch materials, the Napa leather seats, this is really where I think the CX-9 stands out. And even though it might get overlooked by bigger crossovers that can offer more interior space, it's certainly an upgrade and worth taking a look at over some compact crossovers on the market, especially on the lower end for the CX-9. When you're talking around $35,000, $40,000, I think that's really where the CX-9 fits in, slots in really nicely, and is certainly worth taking a look at if you are not someone who is really enthusiastic about the compact crossover market. But also when it comes to the safety aspect, you're going to have a vehicle that you can have a lot of confidence and peace of mind as you're driving your kids to school or to soccer practice but also you have a vehicle that to me is very comfortable as well. So even though it does have its flaws when it comes to interior spacing and also practicality, it has a lot of pros. It has a lot of intangibles that some competitors are not offering, which is why I think that it definitely has a place in this market and is really a great option if you are looking to buy a bigger vehicle than a compact crossover at around thirty-five dollars to $40,000. So at the end of the day, what are my final thoughts for the Mazda CX-9? And in my opinion, you want to know what hurts this vehicle the most? 
It's the fact that Mazda doesn't have as big of a lineup as Honda, Toyota, Chevrolet, Kia, or Hyundai. Because if Mazda offered a traditional three-row crossover or SUV, the CX-9 could slot in as being a great rival to the Chevy Blazer, Honda Passport, Kia Sorento, and Hyundai Santa Fe. Because you have an interior that is really upscale and classy, but also you have enough technology where this vehicle doesn't feel outdated. You have Napa leather seats that provide a good amount of support. You also have a center console that is nice and wide with quick access buttons, a rotary dial and touchpad, and also you have a nice button layout on the dashboard. But to me, the deal maker is the second row seats because those passengers are treated a lot better than in some rival vehicles where you have a center console, you have a storage compartment, you have three level heated seats, you also have climate control back there. And those passengers are gonna feel very nice and secure on a longer drive. They can just relax and enjoy the driving experience. And not a lot of brands offer that where you have very comfortable seating where you wanna be back there on a three to four hour drive. Now also when it comes to those third row seats, they're not the most spacious of course, but not as bad as what I've been hearing. Because I do think that if you had smaller kids, you can certainly fit them back there and they're gonna be just fine, especially when it comes to the shoulder room. That really surprised me right there. But also when you take in consideration with the driving dynamics and the performance, this vehicle does the job quite well. We are not begging for more power from this turbocharged four cylinder engine. But also more importantly is that when it comes to the road noise or lack thereof, it really adds to a sense of quality with this crossover, which really fits in with the fit and finish. Because Mazda is really focused on giving you a driving environment that is superior than its rivals, specifically American and Japanese rivals, where I feel as though that the Napa leather seats, the soft touch padding, really makes this vehicle stand out. Even though a lot of buyers may overlook what the CX-9 offers because it's not as practical, not as spacious, I still think that this vehicle certainly stands out, especially if you have a budget where you could go with a top trim compact crossover or you could spend a little extra and get a vehicle that's slightly bigger, more practical and offers a third row. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.